welcome to the Uncomplicated Perimenopause Podcast. I'm Kate Grosvenor, your friendly perimenopause expert and life coach. And I'm Gabriella, Kate's daughter, representing all the women who are nowhere near perimenopause but want to understand it better. Whether you're just starting your perimenopause journey, deep into it, or you're a loved one trying to support someone who is, we've got you covered. We'll be answering all of your burning questions, exploring the ups and downs, and sharing expert advice and personal insights. So grab a cup of tea, get comfy, and let's dive into the wonderful, sometimes wild, world of perimenopause together. And remember, no matter where you are on your journey, you are not alone. Welcome to the Uncomplicated Perimenopause. Hello, my darlings, and welcome to the very first episode of the Uncomplicated Perimenopause podcast. My name is Kate Grosvenor. I'm a perimenopause expert and life coach. And I'm Gabriella Grosvenor, her daughter who knows nothing about perimenopause. So, <laughs> which is always funny because uh, people ask me, why are you doing a podcast together about perimenopause? And it's a really simple explanation. Gabriella works for me in my life coaching business. And one of your jobs is to sometimes if we're promoting, for example, maybe my book, The Uncomplicated Guide to Perimenopause or an upcoming workshop, your job might be to go through the group and respond to people who are asking for a link. Mm -hmm. So you were going through the comments one day and you were like, oh. And scared. <laughs> looking through some of these comments on in the perimenopause group going oh my god really for context I'm 24 <laughs> so this is a bit it's a bit I've just got the hang of periods <laughs> so you're going through some of these comments going oh my god please don't tell me that's the thing so we decided didn't we mm -hmm. if you know nothing about perimenopause and I'm the expert on perimenopause if we do a podcast together then surely yeah wherever you are in your perimenopause journey, you're going to be somewhere in between the two of us. Yes. Yeah. So that's why we're doing our the perimenopause podcast together. So you, the listener, will never feel like you're not being represented because you're going to have fall somewhere between the two of us. I'm here to represent all of you there guys. There you go. And well, they're going to fall, aren't they, somewhere yeah. between us. And it's okay not knowing because I don't know. Exactly. And so many other women don't know. So. And I didn't know, yeah. genuinely, yeah. until a few years ago. So, yes, I've written a book on the perimenopause and I'm a perimenopause expert, but go back six, seven years and I was where many of you will be, which is being told by my doctor, oh, you're too young for all of that. That can't possibly be a thing. And I went around in circles, quite frankly. Mm -hmm. I was being tested for all sorts of things, being told there was nothing wrong with my hormones because they... Actually, they didn't even do a test. They refused to do a test. I went through perimenopause at the beginning in lockdown. Because you were, quote unquote, too young? Or... Yes, because okay. I was too young for that, all of, all of that. Mm -hmm. And they tested, they did full blood counts on me. They tested me for slapped face syndrome. Um, they tested me for immune disorders because I had like weird syndromes, like, like really itchy ears, but only one ear. Okay. Just one ear, not both. And then I had... Did North... they swap? No, no. It was okay, just, just the same. one, yeah. No, just, the, just the one ear constantly. And I had so itchy ear, nausea, dizziness, and then I'd go hot and yeah. cold. Yeah, But hot and cold, which we're going to talk about today. Mm -hmm. Hot and cold. And all kinds of things. And I will do a whole episode at some point on my, sim my symptoms and my journey and what happened. Mm -hmm. But we're, we're here today to start answering questions because that's actually what we're going to be doing every week on the show. So... In the notes, you will find that we have put the WhatsApp number and the link to my perimenopause group on Facebook mm -hmm. because we're here to answer your questions every week. So this is kind of your show in that we wanted it to be about your questions and to help you yeah. and to make it generated by you because the perimenopause is one of those things where not enough people know about it. And unfortunately, not enough doctors are educated about it. Because, And I know that from my own journey. And I know that from... We have thousands of women now, don't we, in the, in the perimenopause oh, Just over 2,200. Yeah, I think we had that... How long has it been open? About a year? Something like that, yeah. Yeah, so I, <laughs> I, I have a confession. Uh-oh. 
No, it's not bad. No, it's not okay. one of those where you go, too much information, mummy. No, just your TMI. face was a bit. No, I became an almost like an unexpected or accidental expert in perimenopause. I've been a life coach for years. My background is psychology. I talk about my own experiences a lot. My life was a train wreck going back, you know, a decade or so. And that I use my own experiences as well as my background in psychology, as well mm-hmm. as my own life experiences and all my research and all my experience as a coach. I use all of that to help women avoid some of the pitfalls that mm-hmm. I went through and not to have to go through the, the train wreck that yeah. my life was. Yeah. But I use a lot of my learnings to to help other women avoid mm-hmm. uh, but and shortcut the, yeah. the journey, yeah. so to speak. And I was talking about perimenopause one day on TikTok. Don't anybody laugh, by the way. 50-year-olds can be on TikTok too. Apparently. Apparently. From the two of us, right? By the way, from the two of us, TikTok. I'm not on TikTok. There we go. (laughs) So I have, this is not me being Bertie Big Watts it, but Mm. I have quite the following on TikTok. Mm -hmm. I have kind of like six, nearly 60,000 followers. And I don't know how to make one. So. (laughs) I'll be honest. Can we just, yeah. So if if you've been like, "Mm, TikTok, yes, just to say. So I once made, I think I made a couple of TikTok videos on perimenopause and one of them went up, like suddenly shot up to like over 2 million views. And I went, oh, people want to know about that. That's okay. And then, yeah, that happened. So that's when I realised that women need to know more. Yeah. And there was, and doctors need to know more because they don't need to have more training unfortunately no yeah and if if everyone's trained every woman knows about periods knows about pregnancy knows about labor knows about why are we not talking about this another stage of life enough i know and the thing is not every woman's going to have a baby yeah be pregnant yeah but every woman will have periods and go through perimenopause yeah yeah, we'll go through perimenopause so if you're willing to to read all the books and educate yourselves and we all do on periods and and pregnancy and and you read a million books when you're pregnant why wouldn't you do the same do you know now do you know where i learned my information on periods where (laughs) so for all of all of you women that were born in the in the 70s or early 80s do you remember a book called Are You There, God? It's Me, Margaret. What? <laughs> yeah, we learned all of our information from there. Okay. There was, there was a book called by Judy Blue, and it was called Are You There, God? It's Me, Margaret. And we learned everything about periods. Is your period Margaret? No. Okay. No, her, her name was Margaret, the, the girl in the book. Okay. And we learned everything about sex from, a, from a, her second book called Forever. Okay. I'm just saying, because our parents talked to us about nothing. That's going on Amazon later. I'm searching that later. No, you just you would laugh your your head off because we all. This is the thing. So I, I have three daughters, so we have lots of open conversations. My mother yeah. told me nothing, zero about anything. But anyway, mm. we're not here to talk about my mum and her parenting or lack thereof. We're here to answer questions. Yes. So, so. I've got a, the first question from Vicky. Hit me with it. Vicky says she knew about hot flashes, yes. but her internal thermostat seems mm. to have gone haywire. Mm. She is either having a hot flash or freezing cold. Okay. A, is this normal? Mm -hmm. And B, what, apart from layering clothing, what else can she do to help? Okay, good question. Thanks, Vicky, first first of all. Yes, it is completely normal. No, it's not fun. No. So sorry that you're having those symptoms first and foremost. So is it normal? Yes, it is. They're called vasomotor symptoms. We know that when people think about perimenopause and menopause, Everybody thinks, oh, hot flashes. Mm. The quintessential woman sitting there fanning herself because she's too hot. That's the kind of stereotypical menopause, Mm -hmm. okay? So what's actually happening at that point? We have three main hormones. People go, three? We have three main hormones that are are really deeply affected by perimenopause. Estrogen, progesterone, testosterone. Yeah. I knew about testosterone and estrogen I didn't know about progesterone okay testosterone is one that people think is a man's hormone yeah women actually have more testosterone than estrogen weirdly really yeah I know oh okay Okay. but we leave testosterone to the side because we can't even get that on the NHS men can get testosterone women can't but we have more of it no they have more of it than we have but we we have more of that than anything else yes oh okay 
the only testosterone that's available on the NHS is male testosterone. Um, and if you want female testosterone, you have to pay for it privately and it's really expensive. Right. And you can't even get it tested for it on the NHS. It's, oh, it's a sore point. Okay. But that's a whole other podcast. Yes. Yeah. Somebody ask that question because I'd love to let break <laughs> on that one. So we're going to talk about estrogen and progesterone, okay? Estrogen goes down like a wiggly line. Mm -hmm. So it's like a wiggly worm. So sometimes it's up, sometimes it's down. Mm -hmm. So as it declines, it doesn't decline in a straight line. Progesterone declines straight line yeah. downwards. Estrogen is a wiggle. Okay. Okay. Now, what happens is, so sometimes estrogen is, there's a big gap between estrogen and, and progesterone. Mm -hmm. Sometimes there's a tiny little gap. Mm -hmm. What happens is your hypothalamus and your pituitary gland inside your brain are desperately trying to regulate all of this. They're like your thermostat and your temperature control inside your brain. Mm. They're trying to regulate your temperature and your hormones. And they're having an absolute darn nightmare. Has anyone ever seen Inside Out? <laughs> yeah. It's so, the new one's coming out soon. Yeah. It's like next week or something. And she, the character actually has hormones now. Oh, bless her. Yeah, yeah. Really? Yeah. I'm so cute. Yeah, that is I cute. I love that. Okay, so having an absolute nightmare and they're desperately trying to regulate all of this. Mm. And we have a hard time enough as it is. Imagine that estrogen not only declines up and down on a normal cycle, but imagine mm. estrogen, think about how your moods change yeah. throughout your monthly cycle at yeah. 24. Now imagine that not only is it going up and down like that, but it's also going down as it's going up and yeah. down. While dealing with ovulation. While dealing with periods. ovulation. And you have ovulation kind of deregulation. You have ov ovulation dysfunction. And then you have something called estrogen dominance as okay. well. So all of this is going on. So already you're, you're having this nightmare, okay? Yeah. And then you have estrogen dominance. Now, estrogen dominance, when, when you're in a state of estrogen dominance, means that you have too much estrogen in comparison to progesterone. Okay. This causes you to be moody, crampy, headachy, just really uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And you're likely to get a lot of hot flashes at this point. Bear in mind, it's all over the place every single day. Yeah. If you add to this xenoestrogens, mm -hmm. xenoestrogens are something that can cause estrogen dominance so the natural question would then be what is xenoestrogens okay. right so xenoestrogens are things that a woman made we do it to ourselves we do it to ourselves yes okay so well done women <laughs> well look what you've done now xenoestrogens are things that they mimic estrogens in our body they they kind of bind to the receptor sites of estrogen and they mimic estrogens mm -hmm. but they're not biodegradable like estrogens so they don't flush out, of, out of our systems okay and they they're kind of like artificial estrogens and they don't flush out of our system so they regurgitate in our mm. system and they cause this estrogen dominance so we we end up this really kind of icky situation and they're caused by things like a big one is harsh chemicals in our cleaning. Okay. So a little known fact is that I started a lifestyle brand. You know that. <laughs> because you, you, it's one of your little perks, isn't it? But I started a lifestyle brand for perimenopausal women. Mm -hmm. It's called Kate Raven Lifestyle. Shameless plug. But it's it's based on all the things that you would want as a perimenopausal woman, based on things like things like natural cleaning products as well mm -hmm. so when you've been cleaning your house a lot how do you feel like if you've been like if you've done a deep spring clean how do you feel I mean I feel good that the house is clean but when you bleach yeah because of the smell of bleach it does it's really toxicating and it really just makes you nauseous right. eventually because I've just moved out yeah and I remember it it was a lot to yeah to... so what actually happens is that kind of heavy cleaning products as i said they mimic estrogen in your body and it can create this estrogen dominance it can make you feel nauseous it can make mm. you feel headachy it can make you feel quite poorly in yourself and yeah. it can give you a hot flash okay and that's just from one exposure if you were exposed to heavy chemical cleaning all the time you could mm. end up feeling really quite unwell and that's in general that's, that's not in even general. when you have and we know that they can be carcinogenic mm -hmm. so that could be potentially 
leading to a cancerous situation. Right. So heavy cleaning products, also products that are found or ingredients that are found in skincare, body mm-hmm. care. So imagine that your skin, your skin is the largest organ in your body. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And imagine that you have got a body product that's got sulfates in. Mm. We know that the, there's there's baddies in the world, yeah. you know, when it comes to... But they to don't it. even clean. These kind of products don't actually clean anything. It just masks everything, doesn't it? Yeah. So they put things in there that make bubbles. Uh-huh. So it's, it's the stuff, you know, like when you go to like Home Bargains or... Mm. You know, those kind of places. And you get the 99 pence shower gels or the soaps soaps and stuff. And they smell really like... Yeah. They smell like cotton candy or they smell like... So you um, think you've got a bargain because it smells so strong. Yeah, it smells really, really strong and it's really, really full of bubbles. Mm. Or you get like a, a massive tub of body scrub or like body cream and it's 199. If you look for the sulfates or the or all those kind of things on the back, you're going to find them. You're mm. going to find these ingredients. And the problem is that those kind of toxic ingredients as well are going to cause xenoestrogens. Yeah. And you're putting it all over your body. So it's going to get absorbed through the skin mm-hmm. into your body. Mm. Now, I know that natural cleaning products do cost more money. Yeah. Because the ingredients themselves cost more. Yeah. But you can make your own. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. There's a million recipes online for yeah. natural cleaning products. I cleaned the oven the other day with one of the cleaning products from that we stock, but it's essentially bicarbonate of soda and vinegar with some mm-hmm. essential oils. Does it take a little bit extra time? Yes. I cleaned it with this, like um, a little scrubbing brush. Yeah, but it takes an extra 10, 20 minutes out of yeah. your time for a lifetime of yeah. health. Yeah, and this is logical. And... Oven cleaners are one of the most toxic yeah. cleaners you'll ever use. You will always feel sick after you've yeah. cleaned your oven. Yeah. Everybody does. The, the number one, the thing that set me off on my health journey in lockdown was my other half and I, we spent two, three hours in lockdown cleaning the cars one day mm. and all the sprays that we used for cleaning the leather and the upholstery. Yeah. I was inside the car spraying the leather in the plastic you know Mm. the plastic trim and that's what made me ill and I had a real episode I literally went into the house and we ended up calling the emergency health line and no one would think no one thought that and it was that that caused me to have my first yeah kind of really scary episode where I went really hot and Mm. and felt really dizzy and I got tingling down one side of my body and I actually thought I was having a stroke or something mm-hmm, mm-hmm. because I was like so I literally had this massive hot flash tingles down one side tingles in in my extremities which is a sign by the way it's a perimenopause to my head to break it to you like tingles in my in my fingers yeah and like in my face and I thought I was having a stroke and we yeah. ended up calling the emergency hotline because we couldn't figure out what was going on I've got a question Go actually so with everything you've just said mm. what kind of clothes can you wear when you're having these hot and cold different periods yeah, yeah. and why do you feel both at the same time so if we know that hot flashes are normal mm-hmm. in that it's your body's reaction to try and deal with all the things that are going on your hormones are everywhere it's like you're va- the dilating they're trying to deal with everything that's going on mm. okay you're going cold because what what's happening is your body's trying to cool you down. So it's dilating mm. to try and deal with all the hormones. Okay. And then it's tr- it's it's trying to cool you back down again. So, so it's they're like... they're fighting each other. The f- yeah, so it's like you're going... So, it, for example, imagine that you're putting the air conditioning on mm. or you're putting the heating on and then you, it gets too hot. So you then put the air conditioning on to try and cool it back down again. Yeah, okay. And then it goes too cold. So it's like... Yeah. It's like the British weather. Yeah, that's the perfect analogy okay. to describe it. You don't know where you're doing one, one yeah. day or the other. So you... You know, what are you going to do about it? Mm. But the 80, 90% of women in the perimenopause are going to get hot flashes and night sweats. So at night time, it happens a lot because our body starts regulating all our hormones at night time. Mm. So you're going to overheat. Bamboo, 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 bamboo. Why am I saying the same word a lot? <laughs> because it just sounds like I'm just going... Bamboo is your best friend. Okay. I thought it was only for pandas. 
Yeah. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> Is it pandas? It's pandas. pandas yeah. yeah. It's one of the reasons why I started the lifestyle brand because I genuinely couldn't find enough. It's actually one of my friends that said to me, bamboo pajamas. And I had in my head, when she said to me, bamboo pajamas, because she started the menopause before me, mm. perimenopause. And when she said that to me, I, I I had in my head this kind of like frumpy flannelette type, yeah. you know, like button all the way up, kind of yeah. middle-aged frumpy pyjama in my head. And, I, and you know me, I'm maybe 50, but I'm not frumpy. No. So I was like, ooh, uh, no, thank you. Yeah. Um. So I went on a mission to find bamboo pyjamas, started wearing them, will never, ever, mm ever wear anything else apart from bamboo. Mm. And then I was like, well, if I wear bamboo pyjamas, I need bamboo bedding, yeah. which I then found. Well, if I wear bamboo pyjamas and bedding, I need underwear, mm-hmm. because that was a thing. Mm-hmm. Well, if I have bamboo pyjamas and underwear and, and bedding, I then need bras bras or, yeah. and knickers. And I now have cami tops, vests, yeah. body suits. Um, and how do they help? Well, they're, they're thermoregulating. Bamboo is mm. thermoregulating, so it keeps you cool, but it keeps you warm as well. Mm-hmm. So in winter, if you wear it, it'll keep you warm. Okay. But then if you have a hot flash, it'll That's keep you cool. Wow. And whereas, I mean, obviously, little known fact, you were born in Cairo, in Egypt. Mm-hmm. So Egyptian cotton, as we know, is a thing of beauty. Yeah. But not in perimenopause. Mm. I'm so sorry because in cotton obviously it keeps you cool which we yeah. love mm-hmm. but if if you do have a hot flash it will keep you cool but if you sweat it will get wet yeah. and then cold and then cling to your skin and be really really damp yeah whereas bamboo won't do that it will keep you cool and it will keep the sweat away from you it's okay. thermoregulating so it's like when you've worked out and yeah. you're hot people say wear a jacket anyways because you're going to get cold yeah and your body needs to regulate it just regulate it just mm. well, it just keeps the sweat away from you yeah and, and so you just Stick don't off. wake up so one of the problems about night sweats is you'll wake up because you'll be cold because the cotton whatever you've been wearing mm. has got cold it's got damp and it yeah. wakes you up yeah doesn't happen if you wear bamboo. What about silk? No, silk will get cold and wet and cling yeah, to you anyway. Okay. I mean, you do want to wear as many natural fibres as you can. Mm. So you have to be more discerning. Mm-hmm. So you have to learn to forget nylon, forget polyester, forget anything that's man-made fibres. Don't mm-hmm. Just don't do it anymore. Go with as many natural fibres as you can. But bamboo next to your skin whenever you can. Yeah. Because it'll just, and layers, layer and layer and layer and layer. Okay. As much as you possibly can mm-hmm. is just going to be, honestly, your saviour. And if you try bamboo pyjamas, you will never, mm-hmm. ever. This like, is such a life hack. Uh, honestly, just you'll never want to change. Mm-hmm. Bamboo everything okay. for the win. Nice. Yeah. That's a pretty good, that's pretty mm. good, actually. Mm. Other things that you can do? Because mm. Vicky says, for example, that she does layer a lot of clothing. Yeah. What else can she do to help herself? The bamboo now, we know. Bamboo now, you know. In terms of diet, mm. avoid things like spicy food because mm-hmm. it heats you up. Yeah, yeah. So Makes sense. Spices, hot foods, whatever. Alcohol. I was going to say, that does, yeah. That because already changes your body temperature when exactly. you're Exactly, and if your body is trying to detox from the alcohol, it can't yeah. help regulate your hormones. Yeah. Remember what I said about the pituitary and the hypothalamus, that battle that's going on, if it's already doing all of that work, Mm. do you really think it needs to detox as well? Yeah, yeah. It's got enough going on. Genuinely, it's like it's caught in this loop. So Mm. it doesn't need any extra work. So avoid alcohol. Caffeine, I'm afraid, as well. Okay. Cleaning products, all the the chemicals that you said as well. So the cleaning products, Mm. the, the, the skin products. I have one cup of coffee because I'm not human. Yeah, but having said that, try and have it like an hour after you wake up if you can. Yeah. Because your natural cortisol will be fine first thing in the morning. So have that one cup of coffee an hour after you wake up. But we'll do a podcast on waking up another day. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, one cup of coffee, max. The rest of the time, herbal teas. Yeah. Because ha- being hydrated will really help you mm-hmm. massively. So lots of water, lots of herbal tea. Walk around the house with a, with a bottle will yeah. really help. Just a general wise water bottle will be fine. But walk around with a with a water bottle mm. would be would be great. And make sure you get enough sleep because your 
your body regulates its hormones when you're asleep. Mm -hmm. So the more deep sleep you get, because your body regulates its hormones in the, you know, the deepest level of sleep. So you need to get the deep level of sleep, the most restful sleep is when your body's regulating its hormones. Okay. If you're not getting good quality sleep. So that's why the bamboo pyjamas and the sheets, so you actually do get, get a good night's sleep. Ah. So that really, really helps as well. So make Guys, sure... listen to this. <laughs> yeah. So that's why you need really good yeah. quality sleep. And in perimenopause as well, like seven, eight hours is a really, really good idea. Yeah. So that's really, really important as mm -hmm. well. So it's your diet, regular exercise will, will help you as well because your body's then feeling fighting fit. Yeah. Um, so diet, it's the same old things as always, isn't it? But diet, exercise, non-spicy foods, ditch the alcohol, yeah. water. It's just living a healthier lifestyle. Leading a healthier lifestyle conscious. and just layering. And don't yeah. be afraid to have that conversation at work as well. Yeah. If you need to have a little blankie with you, a lap blankie, have one. Yeah. Okay, don't be afraid to have that conversation. Or a fan. Yeah, and if you need a fan on your desk, have that conversation. You know, yeah. we need to have that dialogue. We'll do an episode at some point about what to do at work. So I think yeah. that's a really important yeah, conversation. Yeah, I agree. And actually, let's keep that dialogue going yeah. in the workplace. So I think that's really important. But thank you so much for tuning in, guys. Please do keep the questions coming. Mm -hmm. We hope you've enjoyed the first episode. And if you want to ask us any questions, the details will be in the note of this show. Mm -hmm. And yeah, thanks so much for tuning in. Thanks, We've guys. Thank you. Thanks for joining us today on the Uncomplicated Perimenopause podcast. We hope you found this episode helpful and inspiring. Don't forget, if you have any questions or topics you'd like us to cover, you can reach out through our Perimenopause group or on WhatsApp. For more information on my coaching, perimenopause supplements, books or upcoming events, please visit www.kategrovener.com. And if you've enjoyed today's episode, please subscribe, rate and review our podcast. It really helps us reach more listeners just like you. Until next time, remember perimenopause doesn't have to be complicated. We're here to help you every step of the way. Stay uncomplicated. Stay uncomplicated.